Hey oh, Game Blaster 64 again. So uh, it's the same night as the previous video. I thought I'd just uh, continue on. So I'm gonna go downstairs and tackle that um, monster spawner. I also want to talk a little bit more about VR because I didn't get a chance to really get into it um, too deep. So the other videos are uploading right now, so you should be able to see them shortly. Um, so yeah, about our game. So we entered the Global Archiact. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that correctly. Global Archiact um, Challenge. Uh, they're a company based, I think, in Victoria, BC, or Vancouver. Um, anyway, so they were hosting a VR competition, basically for cardboard or Gear VR. And uh, you know, I'm actually, I'm really, really, really impressed with the Gear VR hardware, um, except for one thing: uh, the fact that it has very poor control. So, what I mean by that is there's only like the directional buttons and then like a go button or whatever like an okay or action button uh, there needs to be more uh, it was probably one of the hardest things actually is to build a VR experience with no buttons um, so what we did uh, it was actually Richard's idea my, my partner um, he came up with the idea of using the gaze effect of like basically where the player looks to um, change the game world so we called it peripheral uh, and essentially it's like you have to be careful where you look because uh, walls will appear or disappear and same with the floor so you actually have to solve a bunch of puzzles um, it's a little bit like um, I guess if you like portal and if you like uh, anti-chamber you'll probably like our game so the, the version that's available for play now um, I think has like 10 levels uh, we're working on a bunch, including a bunch of new mechanics and stuff. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and we're actually bringing it to Vive. Now, we posted on the Vive subreddit um, to try to get some feedback on what, what the correct locomotion method is for Vive. Because a lot of people seem to really dislike um, the gaze method, especially with respect to Vive. Because it is really capable of so much more. Um, the thing is, though, our game, like the fact that it, it uses the gaze method is integral to the story. So, um, I don't know. We're sort of torn. I, I think I think the reason that Gaze has gotten such a poor reputation is because most of the games that did it, um, I, I don't want to say did it wrong, because, I mean, I haven't played all the games, but I get the feeling that it, it was, like, more of a limitation than, um, I don't know how I'm, how I'm saying this, but it's more of a problem than an opportunity. Whereas our game is, it's like we use that to our advantage. You know, like it's it's actually a core mechanic of the game, the gaze effect. So um, it's not like, oh well, we couldn't we couldn't figure this out, so we just did gaze. Um, no, it's like it's actually part of the the core um, experience in our in our game. So I think if we do it right uh, on Vive and and we do gaze correctly, and like it's a lot of fun. Um, I I think people you know would be able to say. Hey, this is gaze done right, where we've never seen it done this way before. So there's a video up on YouTube, a trailer. Um, if you have a Gear VR, let me know. Um, I'll see if I can get you a build. Uh, I, I have to admit, though, I want to go back to the Oculus thing uh, because it's relevant to this. Um, we put in a build for uh, like our, our peripheral game like forever ago, and I haven't heard back yet. I'm going to check it again tonight, but um, a lot of people are saying that, you know, it's been months of having to wait for an approval. And, and this goes back to what I was saying before. It's like, I don't know if you guys have ever heard that, like, Charles Dickens story where the, the kid goes and asks for just a little bit more porridge. And he's, you know, like, please, sir, can I have some more? This is the position that these bullshit stores put developers in is, you know, they, they basically force us to go to this company and say, hey, could you please look at our game? We want to sell our game now. We're done. And, and we want to release it on your store. Can you can you maybe take a look at it? And you know if they don't, um, they don't tell you. They, it just says submitted. So you're basically left wondering, hey, has anybody looked at this yet? Or um, you know, or maybe it could get rejected. You know, like oh, you know, we don't think it's a good fit for our thing. So th they basically get to decide if players can play our game. It's like it's a big fuck you to everybody that works on on software. Um, and you know, I I think that. Apple's been able to pull it off because they're a consumer company, um, and you know their stuff is "quote unquote" beautiful. Um, so they're more of like a luxury 
I don't know, a luxury item than they are an actual power tool or like um, a gaming service that I, I think that um, they've just been able to get past it or get through it or been able to do this because, you know, they're Apple. Um, I'm really hoping that gamers and developers stand up for more uh, flexibility and support from from these hardware manufacturers in terms of like these closed source ecosystems like these closed um, gardens walled gardens um, you know like what happens if we, we we put this game up on the store or we try to we submit it right you know even the fact that you should have to submit your game to, for approval it, it's just like it's like asking a parrot hey hey do you know um, do you think I can go out tonight with my friends you know, it's like, well, I'm an adult. I can go out if I fucking want to, you know, like, and if people don't like the game, they won't fucking buy it, you know, like, why do I have to go to this other dude to say, like, hey, could you put our game up for sale? Like, anyway, um, yeah, it's just pain in the ass. And and so we could work on this thing for months, right? Let's say, and it, our side is done, and we're just basically waiting to get approved. And, and you know, like, imagine those those developers who build something that is you know really useful people love it and uh you know this happens a lot in the apple world it's like oh apple didn't like it so i can't sell it anymore it's like fucking what it's like i, I can't believe that we've put ourselves in this position that we're so beholden to these companies to like let us use our own hardware how we want it um yeah I i'm really hoping that with the you know the whole pc master race thing that like uh yeah they're that we that we push back on this sort of stuff so i was happy to see that um with the whole uh blocking vive players from playing oculus games um caused such a shitstorm on reddit and on twitter i was really happy to see that because it means that people are actually paying attention and and actually saying like no you know this might have been able to fly on a telephone but it's fucking not going to fly on the pc for sure so um yeah but it, it sucks though because you know we have our game ready on the gear and it's like we want people to play it. You know, we, we don't want to have to wait for somebody else that's not even really involved um, to say yes or no, that person is allowed to play our game. Um, and, and, you know, it's not like it, it's... I want to make it clear that, especially on the gear, this is a real problem because you cannot play a game that is not on the gear store. You cannot sideload it. So it, it's not as though I can just send them the, the APK or whatever and they can run it. No, it has to... Samsung has to say it's okay. And, and that's, like, it's total bullshit. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check tonight what the status is. Um, probably have a couple of drinks, you know, get myself through the night. But, um, anyway, besides that, uh, we're really excited about it. You know, like, the, the Vive offers a lot of um, opportunity for developers. Like, uh, I mean, as a, as a game player, it's pretty obvious, you know, some of the awesome things you can do. And, you know, it's funny, we're in this weird position right now where... Um, Everything is so new that even, like, job simulator is fun. So, like, you know, if you told somebody a little while ago, like, oh, hey, you know, you can you can put sugar in your coffee. You know, like, that's a game. You know, like, people probably look at you like you're crazy. But, you know, just the fact that it's in VR and it's so novel, uh, it's fun. You know, and it just, it's, it's, it's a really strange, oh, uh, it's a really strange place for the, for the gaming industry to be in. Um, I'm not complaining at all. I think it's really, really cool because we're seeing a lot of creativity. Um, like uh, my my nephew is over today. He's eight. He was uh, he was playing Job Simulator. Like he didn't want to go home. Uh, you know, it's just like they they're definitely ringing the right bells here. Um, yeah, I, I did want to talk about another thing. So with respect to putting in a lot of time, like let's say for example, somebody puts a lot of time into something, and then somebody else comes along and says, well, no, we don't really like that, so we're not going to allow it. Um, Valve is kind of in that situation just a touch. I don't think it's on purpose the way Oculus and Samsung is. And uh, I, I think I can give the example. So they have uh, the Steamworks AP, API. Basically what that is is like, oh, hey, you can put achievements in your game or you can, um, you know, whatever, right? You can you can have cloud saving or whatever. So, you know, your saves persist across different PCs or whatever. And that's really awesome, not complaining at all. Uh, totally stuff that we've needed for years. The trouble is that in order to get, in order to build that stuff, like it, it, there's sort of a chicken and egg thing here. So like, um, 
let's say for example I wanted to put I wanted to get ready to put my game on Steam, so I want to have all these cool features so that I get through the green light, right? Because like I don't want to have a, my game like this is a different game I'm talking about, not necessarily peripheral, but uh, Star Squadron, for example. Like I want to have cloud saving, I want to I want to have achievements and yada yada yada, right? Plus I want to as a developer I want to learn how to use it stuff, so that when I you know develop games I don't need to like as I'm making my game I don't need to learn again. Um, the trouble is that. You sort of need to know if you're going to be allowed on Steam um, before you you can invest the time to put those games in your Steam game. And you may not be accepted on Steam by people in the community on Greenlight if you don't have those things. So, I don't know. I kind of feel like Greenlight, maybe it needs to be... Like a like actually this is one area that Oculus does it I think correctly. The Oculus Rift Store when you go to Oculus Home there's like an experimental section, and you can actually you know like it's sort of like hey the games aren't quite done yet we're thinking this might be a neat idea tell us if it sucks, and I think that's that's what Greenlight is supposed to be. Um, it's supposed to be hey Valve we're like you know 400 people or whatever we just don't have the manpower to figure out if these games should be on Steam so community you tell us. But the thing is, community can't really play the games yet. We can't unless the games are released on a, on a on an exterior site. But then, even if they are, they aren't using cloud saving and and achievements for Steam and all that, right? So it's like there needs to be a way for games on Greenlight to use Steam APIs uh, and have players actually play them. Uh, and then you know that that way, basically, like maybe on playtime or like money spent or like. After the game is actually played for a little while, it'll say like, "Hey, would you? Do you think other people would like this game? You know, like, how how many shares can you get it?" And then that's when it makes it under the store or something. Uh, because right now it's like I'm I'm at the crossroads where it's like, "Well, I'd like to have achievements and stuff, but like, what happens if I put all this work in and my game doesn't make it past green light? You know? Um, no. Anyway, I, I at the bare minimum, I think players should be able to play green light games on Steam." Without having to go to a third store, um, I, th I think another place that uh, does this correctly is um, uh, itch.io. Now I haven't really tried out their stuff, uh, but I did get an email about it about a month ago. They, they're calling it like the itch.io foundry. Okay, here's the here's the spawner. Side note. So I got to figure out I got to figure out how to get back to spawn from here. So like what I've been doing is like uh, I'll just put these here. So because I. I I want to keep this spider thing here, or like figure out where it is in res with respect to my um, home base, because my other spider spawner, I killed it, right? So anyway, um, the itch.io foundry, it's a little bit like test flight. I don't know if you guys have ever used um, iOS deployment, but like essentially what it is, you set up like 100 people that you, you know want to test the game, they, they have access to your game. And then... Uh, you know, at any time they can get the newest version. Um, it keeps it up to date automatically, so it's pretty it's pretty convenient. Um, the problem with with test flight is that they expire, which is really stupid. Like if I if I release a, the newer version of my game and I want people to try it, like the game automatically rots and dies after like I don't know 60 days or something. And it's like, you know what? Ones and zeros don't die. Like I can understand that. Um, I don't know. In fact, I can't even understand. I was gonna say I understand that they don't want these things sitting out there forever, but why not? Like if I if I added somebody to a beta tester thing, um, and I have an older version sitting there, why can't I play it in six months? Like with Minecraft, like the game I'm playing right now, if I want to go in and play the very first version of Minecraft ever released, I can do that. It's an option in the launcher. You know, why Why should uh, an older version expire? But anyways, that's a side note. Um, I'm just going off on tangent here. So, from my understanding, the... Uh, what is it called? Itch.io Forge or something like that? Foundry, that's what it is, sorry. The Foundry is basically like test flight, but for games um, on PC. So essentially, you set up like 100 beta testers. They can, you know, they run this client, and it keeps their, their game up to date automatically with whatever new version you've built. It's a little bit like Steam, right? A new version comes out, automatically downloads, you play it. Um, and uh, so they're trying to build a bit of a, like a developer toolkit there. 
And you know, it's really cool. I think I think that's what green light should be. I'm a lot closer to that. Um, an example of like Valve actually doing this is um, actually I'm gonna switch to. Oh, I don't have a sword though. I try to avoid using iron pickaxes. I know I have shitloads of iron. I don't need to worry about it, but I don't know. Stone is just so close in speed, and I feel like it's such a waste to mine um, cobblestone with iron that it's just I don't know bugs me. Anyway, um, so Steam has like a, a working version of this already, kind of like if you buy a game and there's like a beta branch for VR or whatever else, Linux or whatever, um, you can sign up to be in the in the beta just by right clicking the game, going to properties and then going to the betas tab and saying like yeah, download the newest beta instead of the the live current version, and you, you know instantly you get access to the beta. So I feel like if they just copy paste that and let us do that for games that aren't actually on the Steam platform yet. Um, or like essentially put them on the Steam platform but not in the store, uh, that would make my day. I feel like I would be so happy with that. So what I want to do here is make it as like brutally easy as possible to get to my my spider. So if I, like how many, what am I at here? I'm at, what is this? 2.15. So if I go to the spider thingy, um, I want to find out what's at it to, what it's at. 198. Okay. Um, I want to do this thing. Let's make it really easy. I remember building this. This was like years ago, literally. I also feel like I went downhill one. No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, I don't know the best way to connect this. Probably go diagonally. Save myself time each time I go down here to get XP. It's gonna take a long time to mine all this out. Anyway, I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with like actually developing games and and making games and stuff like actually and actually releasing them. So that, there's a lot to it, you know. Like, um, is your game even fun? That's a tricky one, you know. Like, oh, that's one of the things I wanted to mention because I've been talking before about you know stuff I've done since December. There's been a shitload of stuff uh, since December. I basically decided I'm buying no more games. And that that died um, as soon as I got the Vive, so like June 15th. So I lasted over six months without buying any video games because I decided that um, I want to try and beat the games that I got in Steam already in my backlog. You know, there's a lot of really good games that have zero minutes playtime, and that's just bullshit. So yeah. Um, so I started playing through them. One of the ones that I'm playing most recently is Dungeons of Dreadmore. It's just a great game. Um, I bought it in 2011. I think it came in a bundle, and uh, it's like a it's a roguelike um, permadeath, yada 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 yada. 2D graphics, but it's not it's not like pixel graphics. It's like I don't know, 16-bit, maybe something like Amiga. Um, actually, I might I have some of that too. Perfect. I was gonna say I was gonna make some torches, torches. Uh, if you haven't tried Dungeons of Dreadmore, I think the Steam sale is on for another two days. This is June 2nd, uh, 2016. So, yeah, uh, if you're interested in roguelikes, definitely go and try out um, Dungeons of Dreadmore. you definitely like it. But uh, since December, um, I'm, I'm actually planning to launch my own gaming company. So uh, you may already know this, you may not. It's called Focus on Fun Games. Um, this is why sort of the segue, like, hey, is your game even fun? Um, you know, like there's there's so many different focuses for a game developer that they could possibly go down. You know, it's like, oh, I wanna I wanna create a big space game, or I wanna make another Final Fantasy, or I wanna make a you know a game like Minecraft, or whatever. It's like I'm working really hard to identify actually what makes a game fun. And uh, you know, I wrote an article about this like in 2011 or 2010, maybe even before that. Uh, and it's like a recipe for making games fun. And uh, that's kind of what I'm putting my focus on. So what I've what I've sort of nailed down is um, as quick as you can as a game developer, get uh, get like the core game cycle done. So like from the point the player spawns to the point the player dies, and everything in between. So with that, if as soon as that's done, 
you can iterate. It's like, okay, you know what? That that sucked. This is good. Like, let's keep playing. That was really fun. Let's do more of that. Let's do this less of this. But if you if you take too long to develop that core cycle, um, you don't know for months or however long it's been if your game is actually fun or not. And uh, you know, I'm sort of at that point with Star Squadron. And uh, it's kind of one of the reasons I'm happy that this opportunity with peripherals come along because. I don't, I don't know. Like, I like the idea. I love the idea of making a game like Armada, which is on the Dreamcast. And I've been on and off on this for years. And uh, you know, but it, every time I play it, I just, I don't, I don't get that sense of fun that you should get. Like, like you get playing. Um, I don't know. What's a fun game? Right? Like Super Mario Brothers, classic, right? It's a fun game. Like, it may be hard, whatever, but it's never not fun. And uh, I, I think the quicker you can iterate on the cycle, like the actual like life cycle of your game, I think the more polished the end result will be. And I think that's one of the reasons that like these games that take so long to come out sometimes aren't as good as we were hoping, is because these the developers didn't didn't get to the core iteration of, like, the life cycle of their game to make it fun and they stuck to you know their first idea or whatever to actually finish that idea and I I've run into this in, in Star Squadron it's like oh I really want to do this thing and it's like I can spend like a month coding up this thing without knowing yet if it's actually going to be any fun and I, I think that's a that's a uh, uh, we call it a code smell but I feel like it's a it's a, like a danger sign or like a flashing light that should come up for a game developer to say Okay, well, hold up. Let's see if we can prototype it much quicker to see if this game's actually fun. Yeah, and so I've I've run into that situation myself, and um, I don't know. I feel like there's so many space games. And I feel like there are, there's so many 2D or 2.5D space games that how could I possibly do it any better than all the space games out there that are already out there? Um, so I, I don't know. I, I maybe you want to take Star Squadron in a different direction. I know that when I played it on the Oculus, like I I put up a build real quick. Um, using the DK2, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, sort of like sitting in a chair, uh, staring at. It's almost like you're you're looking straight on at a table of like a space game, playing on it, like directly in front of you, or like a wall. Um, that's that was a lot of fun. But I don't know. I don't know. I just I need to figure out what makes what makes me interested in actually making a game like Star Squadron uh, that isn't just another space game because I don't want to make just another space game I feel like I should have reached the end by now anyway this has probably gone on way longer than like 20 minutes so I'm gonna upload these videos and call it a night uh, girlfriend's getting home anyway so thanks a lot for listening to me Rabalon. cheers